Prospect rankings are here, and I'm talking the running back position. Always a fun position to talk about, but I'll be going over my top 10 running backs in the 2024 NFL Draft. So without further ado, let's get into number 10, Amani Bailey at a TCU, coming in at 5'9", 207. He was formerly a three-star recruit from the 2020 class, initially went to Louisiana Lafayette, spent two years there, and honestly didn't do a whole lot of anything and then he transfers to TCU where he basically was the backup last year to uh was it Kendra Miller and this year really being the first year he actually got to play a significant role and went for over 1200 yards at nine total touchdowns 68 force missed tackles really high number there and He's become a very interesting like prospect in this class like cuz he is a great athlete, very quick feet. You love the acceleration, gets the top speed in a hurry, and often he's just going to def like defeat pursuit angles toward the sideline. And he's got that home run speed. Nasty jump cut too in the open fields just to make defenders miss and just pretty well put together as a pass catcher he went for almost 200 yards receiving which honestly is kind of high compared to some of the other backs in this class he's displayed very solid vision like he's not only gonna like shoot the design gap the design lane but he's also gonna be checking back for like cutback opportunities and he he just has a compact build there at 599 nice low center of gravity and he does a great job staying like staying upright through contact and could maybe add a little bit more size, but he does a good job falling forward. Just some of the reservations I have with him is he can be a bit antsy at the line of scrimmage and not completely let blocks develop. And sometimes he just ends up like smashing into like those gaps before they become gaps. But all together, like you look at, okay, as like a pass catcher, obviously didn't get a large sample size that at TCU, but we've seen some of the ball skills, but as a pass protector, he's kind of got to come, like come away. Like he's got to come along. He, the effort's there, but he just doesn't take on blitzers well. Like he doesn't like being on the other end of a moving train, so to speak. He, he likes to be the moving train. He doesn't like having to be the roadblock or the moving train but a lot of interesting traits here and he's going to be at the senior bowl could have a big rise got him early uh, as an early day three but the skill set is there and it was just too hard to keep him out of my top 10 but number nine marshawn lloyd at a u s c and that's uh southern california though he did go to south carolina that's where he spent his first three seasons but he's coming in at 5'9 210 pounds former four-star recruit from the 2020 class he ran track and field in high school and actually does a lot of good community work uh, a lot of good volunteer work so a guy that has a uh a guy that's just his character is gonna be you're gonna love it you're gonna love it but he spent three years at Southern or uh, at South Ca uh, Carolina. Man, Southern Cal and South Carolina is going to mess me up. But uh, he had a retro his freshman season. He tore his ACL. Then in 2021, basically a reserve. 2022, he started the first eight games, but then suffered a quad contusion, missed the next three games. And then he played the rest of the regular season. Decided to transfer, went to USC this year. Did miss a game this year with an undisclosed injury, but ended up having six starts out of the 11 games. Kind of split in time there with Austin Jones, who's also in this class, but more of a UDFA. And when it comes to Lloyd, man, you're going to get another guy who has a nice low center of gravity. And he's just consistently going to be able to get leverage on defenders and would-be tacklers. He just absorbs contact well. He will keep his legs driving through contact. In 2022, 80% of his yards came after contact. This year, that number was about 54%. Really good numbers. Really good numbers all in all. Uh, he was just under four yards per care, or like four yards after contact, which you... That four, that four yard number is like huge. It's like 
you're talking about like, okay, these are guys that really get yards after contact. So just being under four is a pretty darn good thing. He brings good speed and explosiveness, just extremely quick feet, does a great job making that first defender miss, runs with a good shimmy, a good shake, you know, getting jiggy with it. A la Will Smith, don't slap me. I'm not Chris Rock. Golly, that joke sold at this point. Uh, I do like the jump cut, just like his ability in small quarters. Uh, displays very good vision, good patience. However, you look at fumbles, man. This guy just fumbles the ball away, like, all the time. Out of his 289 career carries, he has eight fumbles. He had three this year. Kind of a big number. And honestly, if he wants to stay on the field for it, because I don't see him being a... Like, it's going to be hard. You're going to be hard-pressed to find a bell cow nowadays when it comes to the running game. And by no means is he that. But if he's going to want to stay on the field for passing downs, he needs to clean up. Like, because he's got re great receive. He's got the ability to be a really good receiver with the ball in his hands. It's just six drops on 50 career targets. That's a big number. And the dude's pass pro is just not there. He just whiffs on blitzers. And, like, he... If he's going to stay on the field for passing downs, he's going to have to clean up those two big areas. That's kind of like, I love the, I love the skill set. I love the ability, but he looks like he could be a prime scat back in the league, but got to clean up the drops. Got to clean up the pass pro. I think he too will be at the uh, senior bowl. So that's going to be fun. Listen, I know you love the NFL draft as much as I do, and you're going to want a nice hefty watch list of players during this college football season well go ahead check out my draft guide you can purchase it for only 30 bucks by venmoing or paypaling me links in the description it's a one-time payment and you get it for this whole draft cycle and forever and always technically it's a google spreadsheet so send me your email when you send the payment i'll get you hooked up you will see my current prospect rankings and big board my full evals and guess what it updates throughout the whole draft cycle so it's a great purchase and it's a great way to support the channel number eight Jalen Wright out of Tennessee he was kind of a uh, a late eval for me uh, I saw a couple of his highlights I was like yeah I gotta get to this guy then he accepted the senior bowl invite finally was able to get around to him and he's coming in at 511 to 10 former three star from the 2021 class so he is he is a true junior that's declaring early here and a guy that's kind of been used in the rotation quite a bit like last year he was splitting carries with uh, jabari small but he but Wright was the guy that ended up leading the team in rushing yards and then this year got to be a full-fledged starter but even then just wasn't given like the whole workload they, they 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 were very much still in a rotation there but managed to get over a thousand yards but even better 4.35 yards after contact an absolutely ludicrous number ludicrous type of number now i love this cat's acceleration i think he gets to top speed in a hurry he can beat defenders uh, to the sideline he could pull away from the defense in the open field he had 35 runs of 10 plus yards this year four runs for 40 plus yards this past season and honestly has the ability to be a good return man hasn't been used in that regard but like you go back like he's got track and field experience back in high school he ran a 55 meter dash at 6.29 seconds which was the fastest mark in the country that year in uh, high school track and field so he's got return capabilities, even though we haven't seen him do it. I imagine we're going to see a little bit of that maybe at the Senior Bowl. Bring solid contact balance, runs with a good pad level. will keep his feet churning through contact. Again, you bring up that 4.35 yards after contact number. Really good. Good vision and patience, especially on inside zone or gap like runs. And I would say this guy, if you run a gap, like a, a heavy gap scheme or a heavy uh, inside zone scheme, like this is like 30, 35% of your runs, then you're probably going to really like a guy like Jalen Wright. I think you really, really are. Because once he sees daylight, man, he plants that foot, just explodes through the hole. It's been pretty solid in pass protection. His ability out in space 
should make him a bad pass catcher, but we've only seen him in a limited capacity when it comes to uh, his ability as a pass catcher. Now, I did mention he shows good vision, but on those runs that stretch towards the sideline, he's all he's going to try to do is try to beat the defenders to the sideline. He, he doesn't keep that head on a swivel and look for look for or try to identify cutback lanes. So that's why I kind of like, yeah, he's probably more of an inside uh, inside run type of running back. He has fine lateral ability. Once say it's elite, though, is more straight line than he is uh, just twitched out of his mind and runs the basic running back route tree will round off his routes and probably just needs to work on properly running them. All in all, though, I, I came away very, very impressed and wanted more. Honestly, that's that's what it was. With Jalen Wright, I was like, oh, man, there's so much here, but I want to see more. Fortunately, Tennessee just didn't give him the full workload there. Got a fourth round grade on him, and we're going to stay in the fourth round for number seven with Ray Davis out of Kentucky, coming in at 5'10", 216. His first name's Raymond, but he goes by Ray. Uh, former three-star recruit from the 2019 class. And honestly, this guy's got a great story. I kind of want to highlight real quick. He has 10 siblings. He was homeless at the age of 12. And there, there's this very touching story you could probably go and look up where he had to split off from his younger siblings so that they could be adopted. And he ended up deciding to be like, okay, you know, I'll just stay here the in the uh in the system in the program and he ended up bouncing around home to home and it, it's just a really good story of where he ultimately where he found a home uh the the, the family the woman that supported him oh it, it, it'll really tug at the heartstrings but he initially went to temple and he was at temple for about two years and like immediately like the, you could tell this guy was going to be probably an nfl running back that he could probably be drafted in like the first first ah uh, let's say say he was gonna be drafted i was gonna say man i could see him going to the third round in all in all honesty but as a freshman he had six starts played in all 12 games but made the first team all freshman team and he was second in school history in every freshman Russian category only trailing behind Bernard Pierce who you might be familiar with I think he went on to play for the Ravens for a little bit uh ended up transferring after the short in 2020 season went to Vandy uh suffered a season and a toe injury so he started the first three games and then unfortunately couldn't finish out the year because of it but he did start all 12 games in 2022 decided to transfer as a graduate goes to Kentucky makes second team all SEC and we're talking about him here now this dude just gets positive gains. He just gets positive gains. He has great vision, great patience. I love the quicks with his feet. And once he sees the hole, he hits it with urgency. The footwork is great. He knows how to make the first guy miss. Combines that with a strong frame and just tough to bring down. Always falling forward. You love to see it. Surprisingly, really good straight line speed. Like if you give him daylight, then he's able to take it for a chunk of yards. He was clocked at 21.7 miles an hour in week five against florida which was the fastest among the fbs love to see it yards per route ran are relatively high for the position which is encouraging he ended up having 324 receiving yards this past season so there there's an untapped potential in the passing game he just didn't see a ton of the volume over the course of his career now i will say he's never truly been used as a pass catcher and whenever he was uh like you, you would like Whenever he was used in the past game, like he hasn't been completely encouraging as a pass protector, though this year I thought he was pretty darn good at it. So someone maybe that like you look at it, you're like, maybe he is a three down guy. Not that that's necessarily something that the league truly wants anymore. But you look at that and that, you know, that's a plus. Maybe he has that potential and he doesn't have great stop start ability. Not the most twitched up guy. He isn't someone who can turn turn nothing into something consistently and when blocking is less than ideal then he just kind of buries his head and try to get what he can from it which isn't necessarily a bad thing it's just he doesn't have like these crazy cuckoo bonanza bonker traits you know but all in all man ray davis great story 
great prospect. Wouldn't surprise me if he snuck into the third round, but I do have a fourth round grade on him. Number six, I have Blake Corum out of Michigan. I could already feel the comment section, but uh, I think Blake Corum is probably one of the highest floor running backs in this class. It's just his ceiling is not relatively that high, which leads him being lower on this list for me. Coming in at 5'8", 213. He was Maryland's player of the year back in 2019 before he committed to Michigan. And he's had a spectacular last two seasons uh, where this past year, 28 total touchdowns. It's just kind of a ridiculous number. Uh, in 2022, he was a first team All-American. But remember, he tore his meniscus, sprained his MCL, and was kind of a reason he decided to come back on top of pursuing wanting to get a national championship which he did congratulations to you blake Orm. now nice low center of gravity man he combines that with real really good stop start ability making him hard to put a hand on he's got quick feet very dangerous in the open space uh my concern with him coming back from the uh, meniscus and the mcl injury was that he was going to lose some of that quickness some of that uh burst and that kind of felt like the case for a lot of the year but then, I mean, dude, in, in in the college football playoff, it looked like he was rejuvenated, you know, after taking all this punishment during the year. It's like he, he gets some time off and he's like, okay, I'm back at it, which tells me he's probably, he's definitely not a guy that you want to take the full workload like Michigan used him at. I think he would be far better in a like featured running back two role in the NFL where he is kind of the yin to someone's yang. But I love his patience, love the vision when approaching the line of scrimmage, just has a naturally nimble frame that allows him to get skinny between tackles. And I like the change of direction, it's pretty solid on him. And just really good contact balance for a smaller back, though this season, uh, the, one of the bigger discouragements from it. And to be fair, I think I'm gonna say it was just because he was just ran so much this year. He had a really yo, low yards after contact, like it was 2.42. That's really low, really low. So that that was something I was like, ah, golly. And that's why I think he's not someone that can take the wear and tear. Like just because he was given a large workload means he's someone that can handle a large workload. And I think especially after the injury, he's someone that you want split in time with someone else. You want to be able to keep him fresh because that's when he's going to be at his most dangerous uh, runs the basic running back route tree, but has displayed relatively soft hands. Only one drop on 29 targets the last two years. Love to see it. Now, being a shorter back means he's going to have shorter strides, which means the long field speed's not going to be great. Doesn't have like desirable getaway speed, but I think it's fine enough, good enough for the NFL. And honestly, could work on his pass pro. It's not great. So it might not be someone that's just used a ton in the passing game in general. But... I'm still a big fan of Blake Corum. By the way, what's crackalacking? It's your boy, Baroshmo. Just in case you did not know, so go ahead, become a bro and subscribe. Leave this video a thumbs up if you enjoy the content. As always, let me know what you think in the comment section below where we have that nice, beautiful, sensual football discourse. Let's go ahead and get back to the video, though. Going to number four. Five, I have a Braylon Allen out of Wisconsin with a third round grade. He is the youngest running back prospect in this class. He will be 20 by the start of his rookie season. Absolutely redonkulous. Coming in at 6'2", 245, get the Derrick Henry comps out there, at least in terms of size, but... I wouldn't say Derrick Henry is necessarily a comp, but I think if this guy continues to develop, then it's not far off. Anywho, a uh, four-star recruit from the 2021 class. He reclassified to uh, join the Wisconsin uh, Badgers a year early. So he was initially supposed to be part of the 2022 class, reclassified to 2021. Originally was recruited to play linebacker and or safety. Ended up uh, being the running back. Like, 
You go to his freshman season, he played in 12 games with only four starts, but he joined Ron Dane, James White, and Jonathan Taylor as the only true freshman Wisconsin running backs to run for over 1,000 yards. Kind of legit. Those are, those are great names to be a part of. He would miss one game in 2022 with a leg injury and played most of the year through a shoulder injury. Uh, did miss a game this year with... A lower leg injury but has mostly played either just played through it hasn't been severe enough to keep him from keep him off the field and when he's in he, he's been fine when playing through injury i will say this season luke fickle's offense wasn't probably the best taylor fit for allen and that's kind of why i think we saw a bit of a drop off when it comes to his production but there are legitimately like good concerns here like fumbles fumbles are kind of big like he had four fumbles this year what are you doing hold on to the ball not great in pass protection and i think honestly just like probably someone you're not really gonna use a ton in the passing game and that's fine lacks explosiveness long speed but has broken off long runs you look at like he had six carries of 30 plus yards in 2022 uh this year though 40 uh what was it this year he had 24 runs of 10 plus yards not the most elusive guy it's just not his game like he can sidestep like potential contact but not someone that's really gonna put the okie doke put the moves on you but what does he do well the guy is built like a refrigerator he is a mac truck he is gonna run right through you he made bruce feldman's freaks list back in 2022 for power cleaning over 400 pounds squatting over 600 pounds benching over 360 pounds despite being a big boy he also recorded a 10 yard split of 1.49 that's kind of nuts like talking about this guy in the short area it's gonna be kind of wild very light on his feet despite how big he is like he's more shifty than you would expect for a uh, back his size but with all that being said he's big he's powerful he displays good contact balance keeps the pad level uh pad level low despite being six two and just absorbs contact regardless of where it's at on his body like this guy this is someone who can give you extra yards who's you're going to want to use around the in short yard situations around the goal line that's he is him when it comes to the red zone when it comes to third and one fourth and one he is him pretty soft hands as a pass catcher but again it's not like he's doing anything crazy as a route runner or anything but like all in all i have him just barely ahead of blake quorum just because again the size, the short area burst, it's kind of ridiculous for a guy his size. He's got significantly more youth. He's three years younger than Blake Corum. So that's why he lands at number five on my list. Going to number four, I got Bucky Irvin out of Oregon coming at 5'10". 195, had a really good year with the Ducks, former four-star recruit. From the 2021 class initially played at minnesota but after one season there he was like i'm done i'm getting the heckles on out of here he goes to oregon started 12 games in 2022 and was like man this is a cat to watch out for but i mean he was still kind of like splitting like time there in the rotation and kind of a little bit of that was the same this year though when noah winnington went down or that's no, is it winnington it's winnington but then they had like Jordan James, but like he's still like he's taken like 60% of the carries there in the backfield. He made second team all pack, <coughs> all pack 12. Losing my voice now. Come back to me, voice. I feel like I'm uh Dave Chappelle, Rick James. Come back to me, voice. Come back. All right, but uh I, I like this guy a ton, man. He's cut like He's got that nice uh, little, he's on the shorter end of the spectrum, uh, but not terribly, like 5'10". Like typically when we're talking like cent low center of gravity, it's like 5'9", five, 5'8". Five, but he runs real low, runs with a really low pad level. Uh, he's got this 
thick lower half allows him to absorb contact really well. Like, like you may think his his uh, his uh, frame is slender, but like, dude's got thick legs and he drives his legs through contact. Godly, like. If you're a defender and you take a bad angle and can't get a clean hit on him, he's probably running right through you and by you. Uh, displays really good change of direction. I love the stop-start ability. He will beat defenders to the sideline and out in space. Just electric with the ball in his hands. He explodes out of the backfield. Once he touches the ball, he uses quick feet to give defenders difficult angles and just like, ta-ta, bye-bye, I'm gone. He had 13 total touchdowns this year, almost 400 yards receiving, and almost 1,200 uh, rushing yards. His uh, yards after contact were 3.99, so basically four. Basically four. I will say the lack of bulk, I say lack of bulk necessarily, but it's more upper body, uh, is going to have you question, can he handle a true workload and... Again, I don't think that matters much in today's NFL, but you you will say like some of the lack of size has shown up as a pass protector. So if this guy's on the field, you're almost exclusively using him as a receiver. Uh, there have been sometimes inconsistencies with his pass catching comes off more as a body catcher. It was more notable in 2022 where he had 11.8 drop rate. This year, that number was down to 5.2. And you just love it. I think he's probably the premier scat back, so to speak, in this class. Big fan. Number three, I got Audric Estime out of Notre Dame coming in at 5'11", 227 pounds. This is the premier power back in this class, in my opinion. The dude had utterly ridiculous numbers. He had over 1,300 yards rushing, 18 total touchdowns, 64 force missed tackles. 4.27 yards after contact. Golly. Freaking phenomenal. It, it was tough putting him ahead of Braylon Allen, but ultimately, I mean, they're going to be relatively close to each other when you look on a big board, or at least on a big board for me. But I kind of, I kind of, I, I got to give the edge to Estime, man. He's been at Notre Dame the last uh, three years. And this year he was a, like a full-time starter, made second team All-American. And the dude's just got a strong and sturdy build. He is very much a downhill runner who will absorb contact exceptionally well. He will bounce off defenders. And you just have to appreciate the leg drive. I, I don't care what position you play. If you drive and keep moving your legs through contact, kind of be I'm, I'm probably going to be in love with you. That's just how it is. Very good vision, demonstrates a very nice jump cut for a bigger back. Runs with a nice burst once he plants that foot and just shoots between blocks with a nice low pad level. He's always falling forward and will be an ideal in short yardage or goal line situations. Very good pass protector. Like th this kind of like flies under the radar, but he has been a really good pass protector. He will just stonewall them in their tracks. Like not only does he look big, but he plays big, gets good leverage under blocks, strong at the point of attack. Uh, he's taken actually quite a bit of snaps at fullback and shown to be a nice downhill blocker as well. So, uh-oh, open the playbook with this guy. Now I will say there were like the ball security was so much better this year. In 2022, he had three fumbles on 156 carries. That number was down to one fumble this year. You'll love to see it. And that was on 209 carries. So I love that he improved at that. Isn't the fastest or the quickest guy for the position. Kind of lacks creativity as a runner and won't be able to create something from nothing as was kind of shown in the Ohio State game from 2022. And uh, this year was a bit better though. Uh, he is sometimes impatient as a runner and will smash himself into just a wall of offensive linemen uh he just wants to get moving in a hurry and just sometimes needs to be a little bit more patient and let the let the running lanes develop guy just wasn't ever hardly used as a receiver and you look at his build and you're like yeah he probably doesn't need to be you know we don't need to get that crazy that creative with him we know what he's good at let's use him like it Number two, I got Jonathan Brooks 
from Texas. People might be shocked that he's this high on my rankings because of the ACL injury. But what he did this year, I don't think you could take away from it. And he should be, in theory, ready for training camp or at the very least he should be ready to go at the beginning of the year for who whatever team drafts him still got a third round grade on him though see keelan and gojo are big fans uh anywho uh brooks was a former four-star recruit from the 2021 class coming in at six foot 207 and absolutely like kind of a ridiculous career at his high school like, he rushed for over 3,500 yards and 62 touchdowns. As a senior, he had 500 rushing, or 500 rushing yards and 9 touchdowns in one playoff game. The heck? He also punted in high school, where he averaged 42.3 yards per punt. He had a lawn of 71. Yo, you're joking! You're joking! That's nuts. Uh, his father did pass away in March 2022 because of kidney failure. And Brooks has a tattoo on his arm that is dedicated to his father. Uh, I believe, uh, I forgot, I think it was the Kansas game where uh, he was kind of like showcasing that, uh, kind of represented his father. So that's just cool to see, you know, knowing that he came from a uh, good household, man. And, and I think he's going to be got a guy that interviews exceptionally well. From a couple of interviews I've seen on YouTube, it seems that way. He's going to the Shrine Bowl to do interviews, which is always just a great look. So, good for him. Now, interesting coming into the year when it came to Jonathan Brooks. he He's mainly been a reserve his whole career. Redshirt 2021, was a reserve in 2022. Entered the year as a backup to CJ Baxter, the true freshman. But Baxter got injured like right from the get-go and Brooks became the starter in week three and just tore it up. Like this guy was phenomenal. Had over 1,100 yards this year, almost 300 receiving yards, 11 total touchdowns, 63 four Smith tackles, 3.91 yards after contact. Oh, good, good numbers. Fortunately, did tear the ACL, but should mention that he probably is back prior to the NFL season. Brooks is a tough runner. This dude just eats and churns through contact. Like being able to power through arm tackles to get to the second level. I love the contact balance. I love how hard he runs. Displays very good patience, very good vision. He can bounce around as holes develop and he never overstays his welcome in the backfield. Some guys will stay too bouncy and it uh, results in a negative gain because nothing opens up. Brooks knows, okay, things are getting hairy. Let's get out of Dodge. We're going, we're going north. Plays with uh, loose ankles, whether he is beating defenders to the corner or playing the foot to turn up field. You just see that flexibility there. Also shows good acceleration when hitting the hole and just good top speed. He gets the top speed exceptionally quickly. Led to a lot of big runs. He had uh, 38 runs for 10 plus yards this past season. Has a good build as a pass protector and fun fact, it's been very good as a pass protector. He really, really has. And you know what? Hasn't really taken a big workload since high school. Like there is a lot of mileage left in the tank. There is a lot of the tread on those tires. And you love to see it. Now, not an elite athlete. Very much probably a straight line runner. Isn't like dynamic as a ball carrier. and doesn't just like show great lateral ability but i think it's fine enough he, he, he tries to say for the most part no nonsense like yeah okay i'll, I'll kind of hover around a little bit stay patient in the backfield but i will get out and not overstay my welcome so not totally a big burn on him is it a blazer like when he gets uh when he gets going uh in a straight line like yeah that's fine but He's really benefited by his ability to get to that top gear really quickly. So I don't think he's like, well, we're not going to get to see him test, but I don't think he was going to, I think he's probably going to be like a four or five, four probably feels right. Like he, if he, if he would get like sub four or five, honestly, I'd be like, oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. No, that top speed is really nice. 
Uh, runs the basic running back route tree, and his ball skills have been inconsistent. He had a 16.7 drop rate in 2023, but all in all, you love what he can do on the ground. Uh, can he could probably develop as a better pass catcher? Like he was active in the receiving game. He had uh, 286 receiving yards. So at the end of the day, I think he's just a really good prospect in a pretty meh running back class. And then we're going to end the list off with Trey Benson. If you're not new to the channel, you know I love me some Trey Benson. I'm a huge fan of Trey Benson. He was a four-star recruit from the 2020 class. Uh, he played as a defensive back as well in high school. Initially was at Oregon in 2020. Suffered a major knee injury on a non-contact. Uh, uh, it was a non-contact injury. And uh, had a red shirt that year. He, in 2021, he was stuck behind CJ Verdell, Travis Dye. So he eventually transferred to Florida State, where he had six starts, made second team all ACC, and put him on the radar of everybody. It was a really good year. Unfortunately, this year, they still kind of used him in a rotation, which limited what he, what he could do. But the numbers were, like, the numbers are still good. But all in all, they were down from last year. But, like, I love this guy's ability. Coming in at 6'1", 223, love the build. Absorbs contact pretty darn easy. Like, he can run through him arm tackles like they aren't even there. Like, they're not even there. Like, he never stops moving his feet. I love that. He finishes runs. And he's electric. He can take it to the house on any given play. He truly can. He shows patience. He shows vision. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about his vi uh, vision where it's like, I think it's good. I don't think it's among the top in this class, though. So, yeah. But, hey, once he plants his foot, he's gone. Like, he's going to test out, I think, phenomenally. He's shown great return chops as well. If you remember, he had a 93-yard kick return back in 2022 against Boston College. Like, his overall vision as a runner, though, is pretty darn good. And the foot speed. The foot speed's phenomenal. Like, his ability to, like, just shimmy and shimmer is just phenomenal like out in space and close quarters he's just consistently created plus runs he had 79 force missed tackles in 2022 which was the sixth most in the nation despite having almost a hundred or more fewer attempts i did say that number went down this year but still i think he had like a 0.31 uh what is it yard uh force missed tackles per attempt which is still a really good number Still a really good number. I put as a con the knee injury. I mean, he's far enough removed from it, and we've seen enough of him where it's not really a concern, but it was just something I noted. Uh, despite his skill set, just hasn't seen a lot of work on passing downs. Was a plus pass protector this year, and I wish they would use him more as a pass catcher, but it is what it is. I think he will be used more in the NFL, that variety, so it's just a small sample size we're pulling from. And will run with a high pad level, which just takes away his ability to and his ability to absorb contact, his contact balance. So I would love to see him kind of get smaller, dig lower. Uh, and, and if you think about it in short yard situations, you got to. You got to get low. So he can't be as upright as a runner as we've seen him be. But all in all, this is my top guy. I got a midday two grade on him. I won't have a running back with the top 50 grade it's just not that type of class but there's definitely a lot enough interest in prospects uh where you're like okay i could see that I, th I think we're gonna see a lot of day three running backs off the board but uh if you want to check out my safeties video i released that just a couple of days ago got my safety rankings out i even got my quarterback rankings out matter of fact tomorrow i'm gonna be doing corners that's right we're pumping out these prospect rankings but as always Thank you for watching the video. Go ahead, do that YouTube thing. And as always, until next time, be easy, my friends. Later.